Praise God. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, it's my pleasure and privilege to be with you again, to share with you from the Word of God. Uh, today, I want to continue that message, we need oil in our lamps. Uh, for oftentimes, uh, you know, we get to the point of a message that we believe we need uh, to, to expand on it. And I am of the view that I believe the heart of God for this message, we need to just uh, see and understand the heart of God. Uh, I want to make a few declarations here is that one, it's the oil I'm speaking of is not the natural oil. The oil I'm speaking of is the oil of the Holy Ghost or represent the, we use the oil as a representation of the Holy Ghost. So as a disclaimer, I just wanted to say that before I get into the message. Again, I'm using the portion of scripture from Matthew, Matthew chapter 25 uh, verses between 3 and 5. I'm just going to read one, um, two portions of that scripture, verse 4 and uh, 5, and then I will pray. And then we're going to get back into the word. It says this. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, the, they all slumber and slept. Verse 4 says, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamp. Could we pray? Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you give me clarity of speech. Father, I pray, Lord God, with your anointing, Lord God, you will allow your people to understand your heart understand Lord God what you have set in your word to build as examples father I pray Lord God that you will have your divine way in Jesus name amen the debate is still on and the debate on whether the Holy Spirit should have signs accompanying his his presence is still there. I, I, I understand that some people still are of the view that the Holy Ghost and, and, and some of the things that go along with receiving the Holy Ghost is not for today. I understand that some people will think that the charismatic movement may be pushing it too far. I understand that we may think that, hey, why should I go through those seemingly traditional things when there are things that we can see and do and may be achieved? But I want to remind us of a promise that Jesus gave. A lot of times we look at the coming of the Holy Ghost and we pick out or pick and choose some of the things we will accept as being Holy Ghost and some of the things we will refuse to be called Holy Ghost or the, the, the acceptance of the Holy Ghost. But I want to make it clear that Jesus in Mark chapter 6 verse 16 verse 17 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And in another place, he even says, I will pray the Father that he will send forth another comforter. The thing about it is that I am of, of the view of the belief that the Holy Ghost is a very important part, a very essential person to have in one's Christian walk. I'm not here to debate with you whether one should speak in tongues or not. 
I'm not here to debate with you whether one should, should prophesy or not. I think the scriptures are quite clear on these matters. But I'm here to encourage us that we need oil in our lamps. Therefore, we need to have this Holy Ghost experience in our lives. I cannot see me as an ambassador of Trinidad and Tobago. And I don't speak the language. I can't see me representing heaven and not believing that God himself can send a comforter. You see, many times we, we misunderstood or misunderstand the purpose of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is here, one, to comfort. He is here to bring comfort. When Jesus Christ was here, the great comforter, the, the disciples, I remember one of the disciples, he laid on Jesus' breast. He at times will feel comforted. Isn't it true to say that in our living, we come up against situations that brings us discomfort? Maybe it's a death in the family. And it seems as though no other person physically can bring some comfort. But when you trust in God, that comfort that comes from above, it's able to soothe your soul. That gift of the Holy Ghost, which Jesus has promised us, it can bring comfort to one's life. It should bring peace to one's being. This Holy Ghost, it's very important. And Paul in, in Acts chapter 19, recognizing that there were believers, when John preached, they were converted. They were so far converted and they walked the walk. But Paul asked them a, a, a simple question. The simple question is, which baptism were you baptized in? Can I, can I share with you? Because sometimes when we speak doctrine, a lot of people misunderstand what we are trying to bring across. In fact, some people, their ears are so itching for something new, something different, that they, they, they miss the point. Here is he's speaking to these people in Acts, Acts chapter 19. And they said, Yes, we believe and were baptized into John's baptism. Now we must understand John's baptism is that which will lead one to repentance. John preached the gospel according to repentance. Come, be baptized for the remissions of one's sin. Which isn't bad, which is just a foundation. But as he stood there and explained to them, not only this baptism is important that you repent, but there is also another step. That step is where this baptism is not only the baptism of water, but John himself said it. There is coming one after me. He will not baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. This is the baptism. I want us to understand that every believer, every 
born again believer must come to the place where they understand that I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost being baptized by water is fine for the remission of one sin is fine but you need in order to have your light burning brighter to in order to have that comforter within you you need to be baptized by the Holy Ghost he continued to say this baptism this baptism I'm talking about in Acts chapter 19 it's a baptism listen and he perhaps started explaining what happened on the day of Pentecost where the baptism of the Holy Ghost first occurred listen he said that when he laid hands on them the same experience that happened there in the upper room in Jerusalem the same experience happened to them you see many times we think that this was only for then and perhaps they may have thought that hey it may not happen to us but it's recorded more than once that he laid hands on them I heard a preacher said that if Anybody in, of our denomination lay a hand on anybody saying that we pray that you receive the Holy Ghost, that they would be uh, excommunicated. The Holy Ghost is so important for one's living. The Bible tells us not only does he bring comfort, he teaches. So I have a problem. I have a problem with churches that go around preaching and not teaching. It tells me that this church does not have the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus says the Holy Ghost will teach you new things and it will also bring into your memory the things I have taught you. And Jesus that when you believe you can receive the Holy Ghost and not only that you can demonstrate the fruits of having the Holy Ghost now I must here make a differentiation there's a difference between a gift of the Holy Ghost and 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 a fruit of of the Holy Ghost many times in our churches we, we look for the gifts we look and say well this brother have the gift maybe you will hear him speaking in tongues for hours maybe the whole service he may speak in tongues maybe he has a gift but today my focus is not on the gift my focus is on the fruit if one has the Holy Ghost one must exhibit fruits you can't go to a mango tree and don't expect the mango tree to have mango you expect a fruit from the nature of the tree to bring forth and, and I like what, what Acts says that God will give it according to who he sees fit so some your fruit should be firstly after receiving this Holy Ghost is not speaking in tongues is not is the first fruit is love Paul, Paul said it in such a, a, a convincing way. He said, listen, I understand, or though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love. What he is saying is that you need the fruit. 
Many times we pay so much emphasis on the gifts and we realize not that we need more the fruit. Do you have love? If you say that the Holy Ghost dwells within you or you have received this gift that God had promised. If you receive this gift, then one of the fruits, and there are many fruits, but one of the fruit that must be exhibited is love. Paul, Paul says, listen, even if I prophesy, and remember, this is the same man who said, instead of, of, of speaking in tongues, I will prefer that you prophesied that the whole assembly would be edified. Listen, I, I understand that we, 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 we tend to look on prophecy, look on, on the gifts of the Spirit, and we look heavily to decide or determine whether one is filled with the Holy Spirit. But I'm here to focus your attention. You need to put your attention firstly on receiving the gift. Do you have long suffering? Paul says it like this. In your long suffering, one must be kind. Imagine somebody is causing you pain and you are in agony, but you must be kind. Jesus says it like this. If, if, if one slaps you on one cheek with long suffering, you are able to turn the other cheek, listen, without responding violently. The gift of the Holy Spirit, may I refer to the oil of the Holy Ghost. It's very important. One cannot, one cannot produce fruit unless you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there not only to teach. He's there to give comfort. He's there to teach. And he's also there to give hope. Many times we find ourselves in hopeless situations. Can I, can I use Joseph for an example? Joseph had a dream. Joseph's dream was that he saw some sheaves bowing down to his sheaves. And in the interpretation of the dream, one of his brothers says, Would we bow down to you? And his father may have laughed when he, he heard the dream. And Joseph, instead of having a free path to his dream, a free path to his destination, there came opportunities where he could have lost his fate. In, 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 in Genesis, it says that he found himself in a pit. Firstly, he, he gained the hatred of his brothers and he found himself in a pit. And when you thought that that wasn't bad enough, they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Can you now imagine a man without hope? Can you imagine a Christian who ought to have hope living and believing that this Holy Ghost is not for today? That is a man without hope because you cannot live this life without oil. Imagine Joseph being in a situation where all hope is gone. He's now in a strange land. 
being exposed to strange culture. And when he thought all was well, he ends up in a prison. In the book of Revelation, it tells us, in, in, in Romans chapter 15 from verse 13 around, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings hope. You can't tell me that the fruits of the Spirit is all you are looking on and maybe they don't. They, they, the charismatic movement, it may not suit your fancy and you don't like the way they shout and you may not like the way they speak. You may not like the way they preach and you decide that, hey, I don't want anything to do with them. But listen, what you need in your life is the Holy Spirit. You can't live this life without it. You can't be a Christian without it. Listen, many times we think that it's only by the laying on of hands that the Holy Spirit can come on one believer. From my experience, it was not like that. Yes, I had a yearn. I had a desire. I had a longing to receive this gift because I felt it was important because if it was not important, Jesus would not have said, I would give it to you. Moreover, Jesus said, I will pray the Father Therefore, Jesus felt its importance that you receive. I remember Jesus telling his disciples, when you are converted, that's when you will strengthen the brethren. The, the Holy Spirit gives boldness. You see, there are a lot of people who don't want to even talk about this Holy Ghost thing. They don't want to, and I'm saying this maybe for some school child who's listening to me, maybe you, 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 you want to, to share your faith. But there is no boldness to speak for the disciples were there in the upper room and, and the Bible tells us after they got filled with the Holy Ghost the man who denied Jesus the man who ran and hide he said I don't even know this Jesus but they said you speak like him and he started to curse this same man in Acts chapter 4 from verse 31 around there he stood up boldly listen I remember after I was filled with the Holy Ghost it, it was close to around carnival time a little after carnival and there was an accident uh, and a member of the community died and I can't understand it. But there was a boldness that arise within me. I stood on that junction, Egypt Junction, the heart of everything. And I declared with boldness that Jesus Christ is the only answer. Listen, the Holy Ghost is the one that gives you boldness. This man, he stood up there boldly and pronounced that Jesus Christ is the only answer. Men and brethren, these men are not drunk with wine. 
And this bring me, brings me to the thought that a lot of people think that, hey, uh, the speaking in tongues thing, uh, that is just a lot of gibberish. That is just a lot of uh, rumbling off the top of your head. But I'm here to let you know with the infusion of the Holy Ghost, a lot of things can happen. All things are possible. Not only the speaking of tongues the interpretation of tongues let us get to some of the gifts listen it's only when the Holy Ghost comes in and the importance of knowing what the Holy Ghost can do you cannot only experience the fruits of the Spirit but there's also available to one the giftings of the Holy Ghost praise God it seemed like I'll have to continue this message because getting into the giftings of the Holy Ghost, I recognize that a lot of people have problems with the giftings. Some can't even stand prophecies. Listen, I, I, I understand that, hey, some prophets can be liars. Some prophets, uh, in fact, even in, in earlier, uh, the early books of the Bible, there were false prophets. I could understand that, uh, but you can't tell me today that the God I serve doesn't still speak. I, I, listen. I understand that you think that the word of God, the Logos word of God, is the last word that God speaks. And I'm here to tell you, once you have the Holy Ghost within you, there is more to it. He can convert the Logos to the Rhema. This is another time for another message. But this has to do with the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit in order to operate. You need oil as a car need gas. You need oil to operate. Praise God. I'm out of time. Listen. Permit me just to, 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 to carry this message one more week. Because I, I dealt with the fruits of the Spirit, but I need to get into the, the, the giftings of the Spirit. So uh, uh, permit me to go again and, and I just continue this message so I can deal with the gifts of the Spirit. My brother Curtis, I'm glad to be with you, to share with you from the heart of God. So until the next time, God richly bless you. Amen and amen.